so welcome to our lectures on public sector accounting and finance as we going to be running in the next 12 weeks to see what we can do to position you to pass the examination uh lectures is going to be really intense we're going to be doing a lot of work assignments will be given we're going to be doing performance evaluation tests and uh, most importantly everything you need to pass the exam is already available on the website and so what i will tell you is to make sure you leverage on the website as well as the mobile application because the summary videos cover everything that you need to know about to position yourself to pass the examination and there are times when you will be required to watch specific videos because in the subsequent session we will then just go straight up and solve questions and so you want to make sure that you leverage on the platform to position yourself to pass the examination also remember that the videos can be downloaded so it means you don't have to think about internet or whatever the heck i mean once you have access to internet you download some of the videos it means you can watch them wherever you are and you don't have to think about anything again so that is also something you need to understand in that case as we really get ourselves into the discussion. We're going to be diving deeper into the discussion today, getting ourselves excited, solving questions, and uh, really getting ourselves into the discussion when it comes to public sector accounting and finance. So let's see if I can bring my screen up. Yep, so my screen is up. Let's quickly go. So first things first, I want to share with you um, the things that we need to know about. That is our syllabus, number one, and also questions or the way the examiner is going to be getting excited to set questions for us in the exam hall. And so that is the first thing we want to look at before we get into the discussion. So what is the scope of the syllabus? What should we be expecting in the exam hall? Because it is important we begin with the end in mind right from day one because once we have the end in mind it means that we are at a good place to be able to then go into the exam hall to write the examination and so we are going to be having questions on what i refer to as the conceptual framework give and take about 20 marks question coming in from the conceptual framework we're going to be getting into this later on but in the conceptual framework we are looking at a couple of things like the qualitative characteristics of financial statements and if you did any accounting from high school first degree or whatever the heck you know about qualitative characteristics of financial statements. We'll get into this in a moment, don't worry. So qualitative characteristics of financial statements. Then the issues about measurement basis. How do we measure the elements in the financial statement? It's important we know about that. And then accounting basis. So qualitative characteristics of financial statement, measurement basis, accounting basis or accounting approaches going to be bringing that as a, a different slide actually counting approaches or techniques we'll get into all these later on but i want to give you the end in mind the accounting basis are what you know from kg2 which is the cash basis okay which include cash basis accrual basis okay modified cash modified accrual basis those things then the accounting techniques are vote accounting commitment accounting fund accounting those things we'll get into all these later on and so and then probably we could have some ipsas theories coming in from here as part of the conceptual framework but we will get into that later so that is the first part of the discussion conceptual framework 20 mark questions waiting for us in the exam or on conceptual framework so these four issues you are seeing here two of them may be present in the exam hall for 20 marks so you got to make sure you understand them and we're going to get into these in a moment the second portion of our discussion will be to look at the preparation of the financial statement and we'll get into this also in a moment because there are a set of financial statements that we prepare in the public sector. 
and it is important we know the financial statements to be prepared they are pro forma as well as the purpose or the reasons for the preparation of these financial statements and so there's a 20 mark question on financial statement preparation either for the central government that is on the consolidated fund for the whole country or for covered entities and we'll get into these in a moment as well but in a simple language Covered entities are simply entities whose activities are financed either in part or in whole by the government. So we can talk about ministries, department agencies, metropolitan municipals and district assemblies. We can talk about the issue in respect of schools, hospitals and other covered entities. And we'll get into some of these later on. So that is the second part of our syllabus that we need to really understand and know about. So that's the second part, financial statement preparation, 20 marks in the example. The examiner can come from the central government or the whole country that is on the consolidated fund. He can come from a covered entity perspective as well. It is a swag. He will decide what he wants to do. Then the third part is going to be on the assessment of the public financial management system of the government. Again, we'll get into this in a moment. So you know what we mean, because everything we want to do is about the public financial management system of the government. And so we're going to be using the PIFA. At least there's a 10 marks question waiting for us there. And then we'll look at evaluation of financial statements where we're going to be using either common size analysis, ratios analysis, or the budget variance analysis. We'll get into all these later on. Don't worry. But that is a 20 marks area, 10 marks on PIFA, and another 10 marks question on evaluation of the financial performance and financial position of covered entities, all the central governments that we need to know. Then we move on to some IPSAS. Now, the International Public Sector Accounting Standards, we're going to have at least about 20 marks questions on them. And we're going to be covering the standards. We're going to be doing the IPSAS masterclass as we proceed. And so we're going to be covering the IPSAS because for those of you who are familiar with financial reporting, you're going to be having dedicated questions on the IPSAS, which is the International Public Sector Accounting Standards. And we're going to be covering them as well. So that is also another area that we have to be mindful of as we are looking at the exam generally. Then we come to anything else left in the syllabus, the examiner is going to be throwing it here for you. Now, previously, the question four would have been public procurement and then public-private partnership arrangement. But now, that is no longer here. It is now in financial management. And so, it's being replaced by the IPSAS. So, question five is then going to be taking the no mass land area where various other issues in the syllabus will be brought here. And so we are talking about issues such as the public sector budgeting, the roles of key public officers like principal spending officers, principal account holders, controller accountant general, auditor general, internal audit agency. Don't worry, we'll get into all of these later on. Then certainly the issue about revenue management and expenditure control, it's something we need to know about and then any other issues. So this is the structure of your questions as well as the syllabus and what we have to cover and as i said everything you need is already available on the portal 90 percent of it is available especially under the summary video the only 10 percent that is not available is part of the ipsas because in the summary videos not all the ipsas have been treated in the summary videos but majority of the things you need, about 90% of the things you need are already available on the portal. So make sure that you really leverage on them. But this is the scope of your syllabus and the way your questions are going to be structured in the exam hall. That is what you need to understand when we talk about public sector accounting and finance.